Welcome to the first part of this video series where Brandon and I hike the Ice Age Trail. It's going to be a long journey. I mean, the trail is over 1,200 miles long, but by the end of it, we'll hopefully have the distinguished titles of a thousand milers, a title that so far less than 200 people have officially claimed in the world, at least according to the official website. We're pretty lucky to have this trail practically in our backyard as only 11 such long trails as this exist in the country. In case you didn't know, don't feel bad, I didn't know either, the Ice Age Trail follows the edge of where the glaciers reached during the most recent ice age known as the Wisconsin Glaciation, getting its name in our area from the interesting landforms found in Wisconsin caused by this last ice age. If you look it up, you'll find it called a bunch of other names as it had presence in many other places around the world. Ice ages have been occurring on and off over the last 2 million years, but the Wisconsin glaciation started about 110,000 years ago, reached its farthest about 20,000 years ago, and ended about 10,000 years ago. The ice that covered Wisconsin was part of a much more massive ice sheet called the Laurentide Ice Sheet, one of four of the ice sheets covering North America. Don't know what an ice sheet is? It's the biggest glacier out there. They can be two miles thick and stretch over a thousand miles. And from about 30,000 to 10,000 years ago, part of the Laurentide Ice Sheet reached into Wisconsin. The Ice Age Trail follows, for the most part, where the glacial advance reached its furthest in Wisconsin about 18,000 years ago. We'll be starting off at the eastern terminus of the trail in Potawatomi State Park, where the Green Bay Lobe of the Glacier was. Potawatomi has a bunch of interesting history behind it. The name of the Native American tribe that used to live in the area, originally spelled and pronounced, was Bodewadme, meaning Keeper of the Fire. It referred to them being part of the Council of Three Fires, where they had an alliance with the Ojibwe and Ottawa tribes. There's also the Niagara Escarpment that runs through the area, a pretty sweet rock formation. It's a cuesta that runs all the way from New York to Illinois. A cuesta has a short, steep slope over the exposed edges of the rock layers and a long, gentle slope leading up to that. It formed around 430 to 450 million years ago over a long period of time. A depression in the land of Lower Michigan filled with water forming a shallow sea. Sand and silt built up over time at the bottom and compressed into sandstone layers. The skeletons of sea life decomposing added lime to the mixture. All of these layers compressed into dolostone, which is similar to limestone, but has magnesium in the mix. Dolostone is more resistant to erosion than limestone, which is good because we then get to see this top layer of dolostone, protecting the sandstone and shale underneath it on our hike. Over millions of years of wind, water, and glacial erosion, we can now see the outer rim of the Niagara Escarpment in this area. If you travel further south along the Cuesta, you'll find you won't be able to see it anymore due to glacial deposits covering it up. Now, this Dolostone played an important part in the history of Potawatomi State Park as it was quarried for use as breakwater and harbor construction around Lake Michigan. I'm probably going to go off on a few tangents in the next few minutes, but in my opinion, it's quite interesting information. Why? because I wanted an answer to my question. What was the name of the Indian agent who recommended using the bluff up by Sturgeon Bay as a quarry? And it took me about two hours to find the answer, so join me on my journey of discovery. Or you can just skip to the part where we actually hike the trail, but trust me, that will just lead to stupidity and nonsense. Uh, trust me, you'll see. First off, what is an Indian agent? Turns out they were government officials appointed to locations whose duties were to settle disputes, pay annuities, and enforce treaties between tribes and colonists. Samuel Stambo, the man I searched so long to find, was the Indian agent appointed to Fort Howard in Green Bay from 1830 to 1832. In Green Bay in the 1830s, there's some important occurrences happening, most importantly land sessions. 
In 1831, the Treaty of Washington, as it's sometimes called, was signed in Washington, D.C. Colonel Samuel C. Stumbo, John H. Eaton, and 12 Menominee tribe members ceded 2.5 million acres to the government along the shores of Lake Michigan, including Door County. However, the Menominee Native Americans weren't apparently too concerned as this was not really their land. It was the Potawatomies. In 1833, the Potawatomis were somewhat rectified in another treaty giving them land in Iowa, money, and goods, but I'll get into that hopefully in an upcoming video. Because Stombo helped acquire the land, I'm guessing this is the reason he was able to make a recommendation to the government about this area up by Sturgeon Bay to be used as a quarry. However, a condition was the stone could only be used for building breakwaters and harbors. After the government acquired 100 acres overlooking Sawyer Harbor, current day Potawatomi State Park, a Green Bay company opened up a quarry in 1834. At the time, they had to ship all their stone by water. They pried loose the stone with huge crowbars and then transported it to the water by horse. In the 1880s, they were able to start using black powder and eventually dynamite and steam power were used to break apart the rock. It was kind of crazy because between Green Bay and Sturgeon Bay was just a bunch of thick forest. They had to take a boat if they wanted to get anywhere or by ice in the winter. The earliest people who settled in Sturgeon Bay did not have supplies coming to them on a regular schedule and sometimes the wait for the next shipment was pretty tough. They didn't rely on farming in that area. All in all, the stone from the quarries in Door County can be seen in many harbors around Lake Michigan. In the early 1900s, the quarry at now Potawatomi State Park, which became known as Government Bluff, started to be considered for other uses. Many of the quarries in Door County would shut down around the time as well due to the First World War. In 1904, Government Bluff was considered for a naval training school, however that ended up being in Chicago. In 1916, it was considered for a munitions plant a year before the First World War started. In 1923, it was considered for a national park by Thomas Sanderson. They were going to name it after Jean Nicolet, who was thought to have passed through the area but due to the area being so small, Appleton Congressman Schneider said that it was not appropriate for national park material. In 1923 and 24, people considered it for use as either cattle grazing or disabled veterans. In 1925, a descendant of the Menominee Native Americans tried to acquire the land, but ultimately didn't get it. And in 1927, the Isaac Walton League tried to acquire it as a game preserve, but that didn't turn out either. Finally, in 1928, it was considered for a state park by the state, obviously. They formed an advisory council to look at purchasing the bluff. Aldo Leopold was actually one of the members of this council. Incredibly, the House and Senate approved the 1,200-acre sale for $1.25 an acre for a total of $1,500, which is $21,374 in 2018, with the provision that the War Department reserved the right to mine the quarry if again needed. That summer, the Wisconsin Conservation Commission toured the park to make recommendations on park features including an access road, campsite, and lookout tower. The Door County Chamber of Commerce was given the honor of naming the park. Some of the members were against Potawatomi State Park partially due to how hard it was to spell. During that vote, it was spelled four different ways. In 1929, the Sawyer Commercial Club devoted to promoting economic development in Sawyer Village, which was later annexed with Sturgeon Bay in the late 1800s, voted to provide $500 in volunteer work to build the observation tower on the bluff. This was going on at the time Eagle Tower was being built in Peninsula State Park and was meant to be the same height. The tower came out to be a foot short at 75 feet in 1932 with a total height of 225 feet above water level. 
the Wisconsin governor, Walter Kohler, dropped a wreath over the park to dedicate it that year as well, possibly being the first Wisconsin politician to fly. Finally, in 1930, the park was opened to the public. Unfortunately, the tower is slated to be taken down in the near future due to being structurally unsound. Due to the cost of building a tower in today's day and age with building regulations to adhere to, there are no plans to build a new one. According to a staff member from the USDA Forest Service Forest Products Lab in Madison, the structure had a lifetime of 30 to 50 years but ended up lasting over 85 years, likely due to DNR structural maintenance. Now the good, wholesome, factual information is complete. Have some fun watching us be stupid on the trail. I'll try to get at least a little better footage next time. Hi, I'm Julius Kaiser and I'm here to start the beginning of this Ice Age Trail hike. A thousand miles total, at least. Uh, I got all the right hiking gear. Yeah, yeah, you got the right shoes. Yep, got my flipper floppers right here. Lies. You got the right hat. Got my ball cap, Pottawatomie State Park. You got your hackers and Viking tickets. Who wrote this list? Oh, was that game today? Oh. Too bad. Oh, whatever, let's go. Such a bummer. Far. What are your thoughts so far? Huh? Oh, just started. Just started. Okay. Just started. Follow the yellow blazes. We've participated in these things before, and they have a Facebook page just dedicated to like people finding these rocks. You take a picture of it, and then you like... Just keep swimming. And Go then you move it. Rocks, Facebook. And then you move it to a new place, and then the next person takes a picture of it. Yep, this is the right way. Or the left way, because we're going left. All right, you can decide where you're gonna put it, and we're not gonna show it on the video, because that's the whole point of this, is for somebody else to find it, and then take a picture of it. Yep, good luck. Maybe I'll just <laughs> chop it in the wood. <laughs> we'll never find it. We're not actually gonna do that. <laughs> You're not actually gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of mammoths? Go. Mammoths? They're giant, enormous, hairy elephants. They're like the moths of the elephant world. But tell tell me, more. tell me your joke. Tell me your joke. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> What do you call a moth and a hairy man that are combined together? What? A woolly man moth. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Stupid, please don't post this on YouTube. <laughs> I'm gonna, it's gonna happen. Where am I going? We are walking into a cedar forest. We went from deciduous and crossed the road into cedar right by Sturgeon Bay 
or maybe it's Green Bay in general at this point. I don't know. But yeah, still following the yellow trails and still fall in Potawatomi State Park. You gonna dip your toes in? You can get me dipping my toes in. Yeah, Hong Kong. It's cold? Well, it's the Great Lakes. I don't understand. Okay, you can stop now. Time for uh, trivia time. Is is this tree still alive? Yes or no? <laughs> Answer is yes. It is still alive. Crazy. This is the end of today's hike. Hike number one. The start of the Ice Age Trail in Potawatomi State Park. Do you have any ending remarks, Brandon? Uh, we had the best weather we could ask for today. Yeah, great start. Just about, it's just about to be fall in Wisconsin, Door County. So, uh, Peace out, um, Coolio surfs up, surfs up, um, li li live long and prosper. Brandon's like, stop it, Tara. Yes. What, what's your, what's your little bye wave? <laughs> In the end, Brandon and I started off with a solid 1.4 miles down, only about 1,198.6 miles to go. Yes! <laughs>